Dr. James Dobson shares how life's values, the love of money, and the future of humanity are all tied together in his book, Fatherless. You're going to be shocked as he shares about how, how government and the corporate world and an individual's love for self and money could literally destroy a nation, at least his own family. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Yes, schizoid, it does look like that, but it's one thing about it. Our God is totally in control. I just want to mm. encourage you and remind you that when you're seeing those things take place, Jesus says, look up, your redemption draws near. Because what he talked, he talked about this. He said, he said, uh, you know, nations are going to rise against nation. These things are going to happen. But he says, you know, don't you worry about that. And so these things that we're sharing, I guess you should worry about it if you're not with God. You need to make a choice to give your life to the Lord. Now's the time to do it. I mean, it's just that simple. You got to say, you know what? I got to quit acting, you know, like I have forever. I don't know how much time I have. You time just never limited. know. I, I'm, I'm going to go visit a, a friend of mine that um, whoever thought at a young age, you know, is, is, you know, maybe in his last moments of life at wow. a young age. You just don't know. But is it definitely appointed once to die and then the judgment? But when we've made Jesus Christ the Lord of our life, the judgment at that point, Jesus takes that on for us. And, you know, that's the only way we can make it through that. So I just want to encourage you. But outside of that, you know, just moving as a disciple of Jesus Christ, learning to abide with him. We always talk about, and you can see it on your screen, iabide.org. We have a simple plan for you right now. You can go there at iabide.org and request a simple plan. It's free of charge. We'll just give it to you. And um, and begin to abide with him because this is a time because we have so many convenient ways to be able to hear other people who spend time abiding with God. But what if you couldn't get to those people? What if you couldn't turn on your radio or couldn't turn on your TV or the people that you were listening to weren't abiding with God or, you know, you couldn't listen on your phone? Do you know how to spend time with God? We have that for you at iabide.org. John, I don't know if you read the book by Dr. Dr. James Thompson. I Did haven't, you? no. <clears throat> Yeah, this book's called Fatherless, and it's a powerful book. And you think about, um, of all the things that you could call this particular generation, I think you can call it fatherless. For sure. There's something that you have in your life when you talk to those that have grown up without having a father in their life or having a functional father, you know, just because there's somebody there. I mean, you also had a lazy boy chair and you had a stool, but it doesn't necessarily mean it served a purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you're living absent of that person in your life. And... Um, and if we wanted to have healthy fathers, you first have to have healthy sons. And so everybody's doing the best they can do. But in that, it creates this 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 dysfunction sometimes about how we see God. And so, you know, Dr. Dobson, the one that's focused on the family, you know, for years, his, his ministry has really impacted so many people. And in this book, it's just a powerful read. You need to read it because it kind of explains today about what's taking place. You know, what's taking place is the loss of the value of life, that life has no value anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's also tied up with, you know, the love of money and power. And it, it carries you through this whole scene of seeing what's taking place from all the different dimensions of how this decision, because sometimes we're like one-sided in how we're looking at something and you can't really understand what's really going on. Uh, unless, you know, you get from all these different perspectives, which God's perspective is the best, but he covers it. And it's just so amazing because you have a journalist in here. You have a son that uh, um, uh, is struggling with his health. You have another son that wants to go get a college degree. You got a mother who is aging. You have a um, a politician who's working on funding for a particular project. And then, but you also have some particular uh, drug that they're giving people now at the end of life drugs. So it was amazing. When these things kind of come together. You start seeing why everything matters. Hmm. Because if you looked at this whole, whole, uh, today, what's going on in this particular book about from one issue viewpoint, you're going to miss what's going on because it's all tied together. And it begins with the, the quality of life that some young man wants to end his life. And he's in the hospital and he wants to end his life. He feels like he, he's, he's, physically challenged. He's handicapped in some ways. He feels like he can't contribute anything to life. And he thinks the only way I can finally do something good for my mother, I'm going to end my life. And they were like giving him permission. And the mother's like, this is, this can't happen. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this thing. 
And he's like, I can finally do something that, that brings meaning. And society, as he writes about in this book, was creating that kind of atmosphere that, you know, the world would be better without you and mm-hmm. that type of thing and burdens and that type of thing. And so but to be able to do that, he had to have a particular drug to do that or something of that nature. And that was tied to like the FDA approval and some congressman and mm. some journalist that was doing some background things and and the mother, you know, uh, suing over my son should not have the right to take his life. And but all of a sudden it flashes to uh, that um, a mother was aging mm. and as all fathers and mothers do, and um they no longer had nursing homes. They no longer had assisted living facilities. Really? You just go into this little place that looks like that. And then you just sign away your life. And when mm. you sign into this thing, you're really signing away saying, you know, I agree to that. This is how I want my life to end. And wow. they would give you this drug that was all tied into all that kind of stuff. And so you had this son. I'm probably messing the book up for you. We've got to hear this because today, this is, this is a book that talks about today, the value of life. You know, for think how long that America said the value of children is not valuable. You can kill mm-hmm. children. And now guess what? The very same people that went for years, you know, saying that that my children are not valuable and you can kill them. Now that is turning around saying the wow. children are saying you're not valuable Full and we circle. can end your life, right? And so and so this this man is telling his mother, I mean, think about this. This man is telling his mother, he carries her to, carries her to this particular place where She's hearing about all the things that they offer there, and she's kind of a little confused because of that time of her life. And her son, her grown son's going, listen, I want to go to college. And you know, you know you always want me to go to school. Mm. You know you want me to go to school. And so if you sign this paperwork right here, if you sign this thing, then I'll be able to go to school. Wow. And so she's, she's thinking, you know, and you love your kid, and so you're going back and forth with these thoughts and stuff, and she's still trying to figure out because just thinking about that just blows your mind. Because what the son was really saying, if you'll just go ahead and die already, I can take your money and I can have a successful life. Wow. And that's where we are today. If you really think that the way the adversary is carrying this planet and the way things are happening in darkness in a country like China, for example, that has a one child policy, which means every other child gets killed, that we're embracing these kind of uh, mindsets that... That the value of life is is you're seeing life taken at a drop of a hat. You're seeing people treated like trash and treated like like nothing. And that's going to be manifesting, and it is manifesting already. And then you have this healthcare, you know, government healthcare coming in to um, begin to manage care, you know, the Affordable Health Care Act mm-hmm. and that type of thing. And I really believe that we should take care of our folks, but I don't know if I think the government should be over it. Because look, you know, China, the gov- government's over it. Over it, and in China they say this is how many children you can have. Mm-hmm. If you have any more than that, you got to kill the child. You know, or we're not going to cover it, and they just tell you how your life's going to be. Well, look at end of life issues. They've talked about death panels. Oh, they yeah. talked about and people that if you base your decisions off money instead of the value of life, life has no value. Mm-hmm. Everything that has a value doesn't have a value because you're thinking money first. But it only has a value if that life can produce economically. But once that life can no longer produce economically under that mindset, then it's no longer valuable. Yeah, and that reminds me of Agenda 21 where a particular book that they were um, – that was, that was Agenda 21. Maybe it was some a different book. Um, but that you generated – the concept was that we'll give you protein – but you got to actually generate so much electricity on this treadmill yeah, type thing. Yeah, I believe thing. that was Agenda 21. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, this is, this is if you look at history, mm. I mean, don't look at this little flash 230 years, you know, even less than that, because there was people walking on the treadmill for America for a season of America, mm. you know, making, you know, America economically prosperous on the back of people who uh, America chose not to pay or give value to or give citizenship to until later on. So, but imagine that's you and you had people walking on the treadmill of cotton, Mm. you know, producing an energy that took the cotton market over in the world. It was happening all around the place, but America was involved in that. And uh, you go further back and you have, you know, around, you know, Queen Elizabeth and all those different, those times, people lived like peasants. You barely made it through, you barely, you know, eked through, you know, life. It was so difficult. And, you know... 
sad to say, when you think about, you know, uh, King's College, the president of King's College. Dinesh form, D'Souza. He talks about one of the goals is is to take the world back to like 14, 16 or something like that, you know, prior to, uh, you know, uh, to the, the, the Sunni or Shiite view, whichever one is view of mm. the world and that, you know, this modern technology. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.